what we call the market is actually not something which is completely undifferentiated, where each individual in the world influences the market in equal ways. What we find is a situation where market power is grossly poorly distributed. This allows market power to create and shape markets and this we often refer to as market forces. But there is really is force where different powers, different people, different parties with different amounts of market power influence, for, uh, influence prices in different ways. Humanity has come up with different mechanisms to try to stabilize prices. And so, for example, we find that many decades of over half a century ago, there was the introduction of so-called futures and options markets. And these futures and options markets were intended to reduce the amount of price volatility. But instead, we have seen very powerful financial interests able to manipulate these prices precisely by certain types of speculation. And this is, so the very instruments, futures and options markets in this particular case, which were intended to reduce price volatility, have resulted in increased price volatility. In addition, we have seen how, for example, weather events, as well as political events, in this particular case war, have disrupted supply lines. And the disruption of supply lines means that food supplies are no longer able to go. And so people who are involved in these markets are speculating how much will food prices rise and so on and so forth. So there is opportunity to make money temporarily in addition to the kind of speculation which is taking place in futures and options markets. So this compounded effect has made the present situation very, very difficult. In addition, I think it's important to recognize that when food prices go up, they are sticky coming down. They may go up very quickly, but they are sticky when they come down. And the result is that many of us, most consumers all over the world, especially in the most vulnerable societies, are stuck with higher prices.